Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be another support vector machine tutorial. This time it's going to be a regression problem. This is the housing data set we have and we are going to predict the house price based on rest of the data here. Okay, we have all the data like bedrooms, bathrooms, square foot living, square foot parking lot, floors, waterfront and lots of other stuff here. As usual, I'm going to start with importing pandas and then I import the data set using the pandas library and convert it to a data frame, pandas data frame. Okay, and here period set option, I uh, set display.max column 30 so that I can see all the columns and column names and their data type, everything. Sometimes we don't see all the columns. You see the dot dot up here, the dot dot comes in between the columns and then we don't see all the column names. But uh, it is important that you check all the data, at least see once how the data looks. If too many null values, if uh, some data types are not right, it is good to eyeball your data at least once. And next, I'm going to check if we have any null values in our data. So you can see that there is no null values, df.isna.sum. That gives you how many null values we have in each column or each feature of the data frame. Okay, and you can see all zeros, so there is no null values. We are going to define the features and the target variable. As I mentioned already, the target variable is actually the price. You can see the price data is here so this is our y the target variable and the feature the training features is going to be definitely not the price because there's a target variable and we do not need the id and the date simply because id is not related to the price as you can see id is just a random number in you if you do a regression problem where you are doing a time series analysis date is very important but for this one we are not going to include the time series instead we will focus on the features of the house to determine the price okay so i'm going to omit price id and date so that is going to be the training features and as we mentioned before the price is our target variable target variable means we are going to predict price. This is a very common practice to split the data set into training and testing portion so that we can train the data set on the training portion and then we have some data separated so that we can test the model on that data. Okay, so here uh, scikit-learn library has train test split method for that. And first we import the train test split method and then we do x train x test y train y test we call the train test split method and the parameters will be x y and the test size 0.25 that means we are keeping 25 percent of the data for testing purpose and this random state this random state can be 6 9 0 or 45 or 89 any random number so Let's put random state 1. The next state, we have to scale the features. Why do we need to scale the features? Let's see. Look, some of our features, the numbers are pretty big. You can see 5,000, 7,000, 10,000. And some of our features, we have a really single digit number like 3, 4, 5, right? So when we have this kind of different range of data for different variables, what happens? The features with this big data can be overwhelming or they can dominate the model. And we don't want that. We want our model to recognize all the features equally. So to achieve that, we should scale the data so that all the data scales in a similar range. So for that, from scikit-learn library, we are going to use a standard scaler. First, we import the standard scalar, then we call the standard scalar function. And for training data, we fit transform the training data. And for testing data, we only transform. So why we do that? We fit and transform training data because when we fit the training data, it calculates the mean 
and standard deviation of the training data. And for the testing data, it uses the same standard deviation and mean from the training data because you don't want our model to know anything about our testing data beforehand. Okay, the testing data is strictly kept for the evaluation purpose. So we are not giving our model any data or any information about the testing data. So that's why we do not feed our testing data. We only transform it using the information we get from the training data. The data preparation part is done. Let's start the training part. So for the training part, I'm going to first import the support vector regressor from the support vector machine. Then I just call SVR and then fit X train the scalar after I scaled it, Y train. That's all we need for training. And you can see I'm keeping it totally empty. That means I'm accepting all the default parameters. We are not going to give any parameters to SVR. So let's see what happens with all the default parameters. As you already know that for the regression problem, we just cannot call the score function as we do for classification because for regression, a score actually does not work as evaluation purpose because it's very unlikely that you can predict exactly the same uh, as, uh, as our original data. So if you call the score, it's definitely going to be really poor. So that's not a good evaluation metric for regression. For regression, usually we do mean a square error or mean absolute error. That's very common. That's very common. You can also do R square or score, but today we are just going to check the mean absolute error here. First, I predict the label using uh, the sbr.predict. So sbr is the model we already trained. So this is the sbr I'm using here to predict uh, the label for X test that we kept separated before for evaluation purpose. And if you remember, we already scaled it using our scalar. So X test scalar we pass here. And then mean absolute error, we pass a Y test. That is our original uh, label for the testing data and the prediction, Y prediction. And you can see this is our mean absolute error. Now let's check and train the model uh, again, just to see if we can somehow change this uh, mean absolute error or we can improve the model a little bit. So this time I used a kernel, kernel a linear default is RBF. You can see here in the documentation we have these different kernels. You can use linear poly RBF, and you can see the default is RBF. And I'm going to use linear uh, here. And there are other stuff as well. You can see not all the parameters are for all kinds of all kinds of kernel. You can see degree three. That's only for poly. Okay, if you do the polynomial kernel function, and then you can see the coefficient is for poly and sigmoid only and then you can see c is very important parameter default is one we are just keeping it as one and i'm just ignoring the other one that means i'm just accepting the default for the other ones okay so i'm just changing the kernel as linear so x train scalar and y train again and then I am calculating the prediction using SVR1 that we train using kernel linear. Okay, so I'm using that SVR1 to predict the label again for our X test. And then we get the mean absolute error. You can see that it is improved. The mean absolute error is quite lower than this one here. But the general practice in real life is if you're not happy with this error is because you can see this error is quite big. If you don't think this is acceptable, there are other regression models that you can use. You have linear regression, polynomial regression, uh, you have XG post, decision tree random forest, so many other regression models are available. So many other regression models are available for that. We are going to learn more and more models over the time. I'm going to cover more models in the future, so stay tuned. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.